Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Thanks for joining us here for New Life Live. Really glad you're here with me and Dr. Jill Hubbard and Becky Brown. Hello. We're all here together. Hello, guys. And we well, were just we're talking about, together. Yeah, we are. We are. Okay. <laughs> but we were just talking about important things in uh, getting through this time of COVID-19 and then getting over whatever mm -hmm. it is and then getting beyond it. And the question would be, is it valuable for a believer, um, an adult, to have an imaginary friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Steve has one, yeah. and he named it. So. Yeah, my, my imaginary friend. It must be okay. <laughs> yeah. but his name's Bucky. Anyway, it's a people close. say, do you ever talk to yourself? No, I talk to my imaginary friend. <laughs> anyway, hey, you know what? It, talking about, speaking of talking to yourself, this is something I learned. I just think this is so great. You know, if you're always talking to yourself and kind of griping about things, mm -hmm. you know, oh, gosh, I, you know, start talking to God like that. Just just yeah. don't talk to yourself. Just say, right. Oh, just talk God. out loud. And then you get kind of tired of griping to mm -hmm. God. And then you say, mm -hmm. hey, God, thank you for mm -hmm. uh, that uh, not killing me or whatever. And, and you can really change your perspective because God wants us to pray without deceasing or, or ceasing, <laughs> either one. So. Well, that's actually a strategy for COVID that preparedness is. That is. is to pray about everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that Paul wrote that somewhere, but, you know, it's just that fa that practice of Praying about the situation, praying that God will give you strength and insight and just uh, to relieve some of that pressure that we right. all have right now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I told a story when I preached on uh, Labor Day. I, I told a story about uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, mm -hmm. who when he was 23, he was preaching in this huge, huge auditorium. And a lot of people were jealous. They, they didn't think he should be there. Literally, cars were lined up for seven miles to get wow. in. And someone, several people at the same time, yelled fire. There was no fire. Seven people were trampled to death, 28 people critically injured. And he spent two weeks in the bed uh, in fetal position, finally got out. But for the rest of his life, now he died at 58, morbidly obese. The rest of his life, he would have these great times of accomplishment, and he would, it says, he, go, he went to bed for months at a time in depression. Mm -hmm. So I would just say that he got through that trauma, but he never got mm -hmm. over it right. and beyond it. it. It stuck with him. And we have so many wonderful techniques, so many wonderful ways, books, therapists, trauma therapists, uh, that, that will help us, medication if we need it, to get mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. something and beyond something. And it, it, didn't, it doesn't mean that, that Spurgeon was full of sin, and he, that's why he was depressed. I just think he didn't have a safe place, probably, to, to deal with you all know, that he went through. For all the years that I've been part of New Life, and I've been, I always say I'm New Life's biggest fan. Yeah. But, um, you know, I've learned the combination of our walk with Christ yeah. mm -hmm. as well as sound psychological instruction right because you can take a verse like come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest jesus tells you that yep. but what does that practically look like and mm -hmm. that's what we have done i mean like i'm so honored blessed to be part of the ministry here but i think the listeners know that yeah. you know all of you who are listening you know that's what we do and i love that so much because otherwise it's just that bible and and it's a church on Sunday, and the rest of the week I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you, well, when we come back, I want to tell you some, three things that I hope that you understand about New Life and the people that we work around here. So I'll do that right after this. 1-800-229-3000. If you need some help, you know, it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And uh, about a month from now, we're going to be doing our life recovery workshop, and that's going to be 12 Steps to happier. We were thinking about 12 steps to sadder, but <laughs> hey, we got enough of that. We need happier. We sure do. <laughs> we can do it. So come join us for that. We'll take a break and come right back after this. Mm -hmm. 
after I found the pornography on the internet, I said you either get help or I have to leave this household. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter in place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. I believe that I could do it on my own. I just believed if I tried hard enough and pulled myself up hard enough by my bootstraps, I could do it. It was a battle that I'd had all my life. I had to get help. The Every Man's Battle Workshop can be a trip to the sexual addiction emergency room. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, September 12th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The single most helpful thing was to realize that I wasn't the weirdest guy on the planet. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterman here, and I just want to point out three things that I hope you have observed over the years, people here. Number one, we're kind of normal <laughs> people. Um, we're connected to other folks. We're, we're not isolated. We're not uh, up on a pedestal, arrogant. We're just kind of normal. Second thing is we're not stupid. You know, we didn't spend five minutes thinking about something that we're talking about here. We've studied over and over years, looking at new things. We're not stupid. Third thing is that we're nice. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just, we, we, we're nice people. <laughs> now, now, let me tell you why I, I threw that in there. Because a lot of times you hear folks uh, yelling against counseling, psychology, psychologists. Okay, well, first of all, um, they're kind of weird. If you, if you compare those people to just normal people, the ones that are doing that are, are kind of weird. And they're also kind of mean. They're not nice. They're angry. And they're mean. And another thing is they're very arrogant. I mean, you know, Jill has a Ph.D. Uh, we have master's degrees. There are people that have uh, gone to medical school to study medicine. And what you're saying is these are stupid uncommitted Christians, if they say they're believers, and I know everything. I've never been mm -hmm. to medical school, but I know everything. That's what you're saying. You're saying, I've never studied medicine, but I know it's not right. Come on, give, right. give us a break. It's the arrogance that causes you to pass judgment on a believer who has gone far beyond your education level to study a particular thing. The person in this world closest uh, to, to being Jesus that I ever met was Thomas Guanamutu in, in Bangalore, India. And Thomas, at like 65, goes back to medical school. He was already a physician to study psychiatry because there were so many people with emotional needs and he wanted to be able to treat them better. The most committed Christian. He would, he would practice medicine. He would lead the choir, and then he would go to the slum of Koramungala. He took me there and ministered. And somebody would be saying to him, oh, you're, you're a sinner because you think medicine could help somebody. And here he went back to study to be able to help somebody. Mm -hmm. It's just arrogance to judge someone like that. So mm -hmm. I just want you to know, when you hear weird, arrogant, mean people mm -hmm. say, I don't believe in counseling, they should get it. They <laughs> should get the counseling. And then I just hope you see. Other than what I just said there, I'm, I'm nice most of the time. Uh, it wasn't very nice. He has nice. strong yeah. feelings okay. about that. <laughs> I do. All right. Let's go to the phones and let's talk with... They just hung up. Okay. <gasps> then no. let's talk with... <laughs> they didn't like your rant. Charlene, Boise, Idaho, KBXL. <laughs> Hello, Charlene. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. I understand Boise, Idaho is one of the greatest places in the world to live. Why would you have a problem? What it is you're dealing with? We want to help you. Oh, thank you. So my um, father died in November. My mom died um, about three months ago. Mm. And I quit my job last year um, in February um, when she got very ill. She's been ill for about seven years on and off. Oh, um, and so I quit my job last year and took care of her full time. Um, and then my dad, I was managing him as well. They were divorced. But mm -hmm. I... Um, and then adding in the pandemic, so I got very isolated. And I've lived with her for 10 years, helping her and taking care of her. And so I'm really struggling now with anxiety and how to, and I've dealt with that in the past, but it's just 
quite high anxiety right now, and just how to get back my bearings. Um, I'm just very feel very lost and thrown off and and scared, and it's hard to be in the house. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, okay. you've lived with her a long time, and Charlene, it sounds like your role has been that of caretaker for a long time, and yes. now both of your patients are are gone, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And that's a lost feeling in and of itself because you have had to organize your life around this, um, okay. and it's a it's a wonderful thing to be that dedicated. But there is, you know, that and that gave you a real sense of purpose. So now yeah. in this transition, you've lost not only your, your mom, someone you were very close to, but your purpose. And you've lost it at a time where everybody is feeling aimless and uncertain. So there's this, you know, external collective anxiety happening. And then you've also got that in your home because it's too still and it's too quiet. Yes. Yeah. Right? I was thinking so, too. I was thinking too, Charlene. Your adrenaline has been high for the last ten years. Mm, yeah, you are. You've been putting fires out. You've been addressing the needs that um, others cannot, and so it makes sense to me that um, now that there's been some kind of rest, kind of built into your day, that anxiety yeah. starts to come right. Up it fills because the space. it's that energy of yeah it just fills that space and so uh, you know we could always say you need to talk to a counselor you need to get with a group all those kind of things i'm wondering what's keeping you from moving forward like have you identified that um yes i i was i did attend grief share at a local church and i did the the 13 weeks of that um mm. and then i have the hospice counselor as well um that i still talk to but i <laughs> I had um, a divorce back in my 20s where I felt like I ruined my life, a lot of guilt. I left him, had an affair, etc. And so I'm feeling like there's just, like I can't figure out how to move forward. Hmm. Was some of that kind of maybe pushed aside because you had this new focus of dealing with your parents? Um probably because I I felt so much guilt with the divorce and so I felt like I was doing something good Mm -hmm. um, or um, biblical etc that God wouldn't be mad anymore with me. Mm -hmm. God's not mad at you Charlene. He loves you and he cares for you and he knows your pain Mm -hmm. and um, I just I know you've probably heard that but in case you haven't heard it in a while it's very important for you to know that. Um, because the enemy wants you to believe that you will forever have to pay back. Yeah, it's for like you've been doing you've penance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so you were okay as long as you had that to do to repay. But now that they're gone, now the lie is that you're left and you haven't paid it back yet. Well, here's what I think is the the bad news. The bad news isn't that God is angry at you. The bad news is that God is waiting for you to accept his grace, forgiveness through Christ on the cross, and is waiting for you to do something with this now. So you go and you recover, you get therapy, you get through this and beyond it, and then you become a resource for other people that are thinking about just going ahead and having an affair and getting out of their marriage. See, yeah. I think that's the that's the, mm-hmm. the bad news is you got work to do. But the good news is, well, after you do the work, there's a lot of amazing, fulfilling life out mm-hmm. there. You know, whenever we yeah. were, I was just telling people this last weekend, whenever we respond to God, it usually gets worse before mm-hmm. it gets better. And, and what we want is we want God to relieve all the pain and stress and suffering. Well, he is a peacemaker. And yes, but sometimes when we have gone astray we've got some really tough stuff to do so that's what i would wish for you is that Mm -hmm. you would turn this whole thing around i'm going to send you um seven keys to spiritual renewal and transformation i'm going through that or i've gone through that on facebook live but there is this one key and it's it's that transformation key where we take what satan meant for evil and we turn it into something good what satan wants you to do is take whatever was evil feel shame about that the rest of your life and Mm -hmm. do nothing 
yeah. That's and Satan's hide yourself. Goal. Yeah, yeah, that's Satan's goal for you. Well, and I would think too, Charlene. I, I'm not to discredit the hospice um, counselor. I'm sure they're really um, great at what they're doing. It may be time for you to move to a different um, type of therapy where you're addressing the anxiety. Um, it could be that you need some medication. You know, our brains get um, kind of, uh, you know. We need that support. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's directly what you need to do, but I would, I would probably uh, look in that direction. And just like what Steve said, you do have work to do, and that's the good news. Mm -hmm. God's got yeah. a plan for your life. He's got yeah. Things he doesn't for waste you to do. anything. That's right. That's right? right. And it's to the legacy of your parents. I mm -hmm. mean, so many times I hear when people lose a loved one, their life ends too. Yeah. And they, they back it all up against the, the grief and the despair of the loss. Um, but sometimes people do that with their sin too, right, Steve? It's mm -hmm. like, yep. you know, because I did this and I can't do anything right. else, and this is the reason why. Exactly what Satan wants you to do. So let me send you this little um, Seven Keys Spiritual Renewal, also called Transformation. And I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. If you go to Facebook Live or even YouTube, you can see these seven keys. And I think it would help for you to go through all of them. All right, let's go to Karen, San Diego, and uh, watches on YouTube there. Mm. Hi, hi, Karen. How are you today? Hi, I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing all right. How could we help? Um, uh, so my husband and I, we were together for four years. Um before getting married, and uh, during that time, we, we had a daughter. Um, after we got married, uh, shortly after, I had an affair. Um, I ended it, and months passed, and we um, we got pregnant. We wanted to have a second child, and we did. Mm -hmm. During that during that pregnancy, he started he started having an affair. Um, I hid mine from him. For a while, and when I found out about his affair, I, I kicked him out of the house just out of anger. Um, and later on, I um, started going to church and believing God, and, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I had to tell him to confess to him, and, and I confessed to him about the affair that I had. Um, of course, he was furious, and I ended up leaving. And he continued having this affair for another three years. And we were just separated, but we, we were still married. I was just, just hoping that he'd come back, I guess. Um, he had a baby with this other person. And now he, um, uh, he wants to work on our marriage. But one of the things he, he, I guess he never dealt with was the emotions of the affair that I had on him. And we've been talking, and now he's hurting, and you know, just feeling the pain from what I did to him. And I just want to know. I, I'm, I started going to therapy, you know, to to deal with everything that that I, I dealt with. Um, I just want to know how can I help him? How can I how can I support him when I feel like I'm I'm facing the same thing? I'm I'm feeling the same emotion that he's feeling now. Okay, so when we hang up. You um, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll transfer her. Or we can transfer you. And you say to them, my husband and I, we need some help. And I don't think he's going to get better if he doesn't get some help. Look, Karen, this is why we're here, to help these impossible situations. You know, your husband, he can grieve on his own. He can be angry on his own. And, mm -hmm. and then five years later, he finally snaps out of it. Why do that? You know, wh why not humble himself, get some help, and work through this? This is very, very complicated, mm -hmm. and he needs a professional. Jill, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that both of you, Karen, have issues with intimacy and yeah. have some yep. immature pockets mm -hmm. that need to be addressed. Because, look, you both, independently of each other, did the same acting out. Okay, so this is less about the cheating and more about what is it in each of you that needs to deflect and run after a fantasy instead of dealing with what's real and in front of you. And that's where you need to help each other, not run away, because it, it, you could go on to other people and you will do the same things. 
So, so it's time to learn it now. God has put you in each other's lives to learn together. Well, and I would say you both have your own work to do. You yes. both have your own work to do. And Karen, it's I hear you saying that, how can I support him? You need to draw back. And, you know, as you do your own work, you're going to be supporting him by the fact that you're not reacting to him. Mm -hmm. And now we have children that we have to be adults to. Right. And so if you guys all get um, moving in the right direction, including um, the mother of his child from the uh, relationship, there's hope for some clarity. We don't even know what that looks like at this point, mm -hmm. but you all have work to do um, towards the end. But stay um, connected here. We'll get you connected. I think there's so much hope. Um, it, it doesn't have to end in despair, but it also doesn't have to end in deceit either. So, Well, we do the research, and if we could have snapped ourselves out of it, we would have by now. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop will be held online Saturday, October 24th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylon and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You're a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. We're going to go talk to Ray here, Salt Lake City, where he's, well, let's see, they're going to have to let him go before I can plug him in. He listens on Sirius XM Satellite Radio Channel 131. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We're really glad that he does. Here he is, Ray. How you doing? I mean, she. It's a, it's a she. Ray, hi. Hi, how Sorry are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you good. for taking my call. Sure, what's going on? Um, I am a recovered alcoholic addict, and God gave me a gift. Um, and I've had it my whole life, even before my addictions. Um, he what is that gift? gift that he, of, what is it? <laughs> uh, he shows me things. I have premonitions. And sometimes... Uh, when he shows me something, um, it will be immediately after he shows me that it uh -huh. actually happens. And sometimes he'll show me something, and it will be either weeks, months, or years later that it actually happens. Okay, can and you give us I an example? Can you give us an example where when you tell us we're going to go, yeah, that was a premonition right there. Absolutely. <laughs> what would that be? Um, well, I can give you a long premonition or a short premonition. Well, let's just go for short. <laughs> okay. So one of the short, one of the immediate premonitions was um, I was driving by a lake uh, the other day, and I saw someone on a jet ski on that lake, and he showed me that that person was going to 
eat that water. Like he was going to wreck his jet ski. And I kept driving. I, I knew what it was because I get them all the time. Mm-hmm. And I kept driving. And about three seconds after I had the premonition, I turned and I looked at the lake again and he ate the water. So Okay. I knew before he, before he wrecked that he was going and to so, wreck. Now, here God would be uh, intervening in the natural laws of nature. What would be the purpose of him showing you mm-hmm. a person is going to fall off their jet ski? Which happens quite I'm, frequently. I'm not even sure. Okay, so what do you think is the reason that you have this gift i mean you know that every gift i believe yeah go ahead i believe that god gave me this gift um because he has a purpose for me to be able to use this gift um somewhere down the line um i am a recovering alcoholic addict and there was a he took my dad when i was 16 and when he took my dad I didn't believe anymore. I had no more faith. And through my addictions, um, I ignored God. And now that I'm past that, I'm to a point where I need to strengthen my faith, build my armor, and find out why exactly he gave me this gift and what I'm supposed to do with it. So in order for me to find out what I'm supposed to do with the gift, Mm-hmm. And how to use it to 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 um, better him and to bring people closer to him. Um, I've started reading the Bible. I say my prayers, and I'm. The question is, is I'm not sure exactly where to start in the Bible. I've read the book of Luke hmm. many times. Well, John would be where I would but, start. John would be where you I would, would start with John. The ch- yeah, in fact, I okay. first time I ever got a life recovery Bible, I gave my first one away, and I said to this woman, "I don't think I've helped you very much talking to you, but if you would just open this and start here, read John." Met her six months okay. later, she said, and she was totally different. She said, "I stopped believing the lies of Satan." And I started accepting the truth of Jesus Christ I found in this Bible, and her life was transformed. So I would hope for that for you. Now, here's the thing. Um, You reading the Bible by yourself is not enough. You need to have other women that are spiritually minded women that you can connect with, or you're going to get weird. It just happens all the time. Do you get what I'm saying? It, it, the Bible yes. says for us to mm-hmm. not forsake uh, the assembling of ourselves together. The Bible says confess your sins one to another. All sorts of things that we need to do. Encourage one another. So you need the you need to be sure that you're reading the Bible and doing what it says, which is gather with some other women. Don't be independent, or you're just going to be okay. weird and strange. Um, I also am curious, Ray. You mentioned that you're recovered. Um, are you still participating in recovery processes, groups, anything like that? No. Um, so not, not right now. Um, on August 27th, 2010, um, in the, right in the middle of my addictions, um, after many prayers of not being able to get out of the situation, on August 27, 2010, I was walking to the street, and God literally knocked me upside of the head. Something went through my body on that street, and the next thing I heard, he, he, <laughs> the next thing I heard, it was an audible voice, and he told me, he says, Ray, you are done doing dope, and it stopped me dead in my tracks, and, because I knew what it was, and I knew where it came from. And I said, okay, I'm done doing dope, but I'm also an alcoholic. And I took five more steps. And I said, but I can still drink. And he knocked me upside of the head again. And he said, no, no, no. He said, you are done. And that was the last time that I used and drank for seven years. Okay. Well, let me, let me tell you what he didn't do. Okay. And you've been, you, you haven't had a drink in seven years. That was seven years ago, right? Ten. Ten years um, ago. How many years ago was I, it was 2010. Okay. On, 
on August I'm going to tell you something you didn't. I'll tell you something you didn't get. I think you'll like this. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of seven books, including Conquer Worry and Anxiety by Dr. Daniel Amen, Healing is a Choice by Steve Arterburn, and Forgiving What You'll Never Forget and Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, both by Dr. Dave Stu. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. How you doing? Still there, Ray? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm good. So here's the thing. Here's yeah, what I wish had happened, and I wanted to start today. So when you get delivered, God gives you a gift. And the, what you're delivered from is the craving and the desire that could overwhelm you and cause you to to drink or use again and i really i've i know of cases one guy looks down in the basin while he's shaving sees his reflection never has the desire to drink again okay so i really believe in supernatural intervention sometimes but just think about that was that was 2010 if you had gotten into a recovery program or a women's bible study some kind of growth program 10 years later you wouldn't be saying, I don't know where to start in the Bible. You would, because no one gets delivered into mature Christian character, wisdom, discernment. And so I want you to start that journey now. Because it's not about not drinking, not using. It's about growing, maturing, and then God uses you. Here's what I think. I think you having a premonition about a jet ski is kind of ridiculous, quite frankly. Here's what I think would be great <laughs> is that you're walking down the street and because you're so wise and you know recovery and you've been around people that aren't, you have a premonition that somebody is going to be drunk that night if you don't go over there and talk with them and invite them to go to a meeting. See, that's how I think God could really put that premonition to work to transform lives and I would just love to hear what's going to happen to you because you are on the right track here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're on the right track. and I'm going to send you a life recovery bible and it's 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 going to help you grow I'll send you a little workbook with it too and I want you to call us back and tell us whether or not anything different happened but I really believe that the premonition could be used to transform lives not just be fascinating mm -hmm. that you were able to predict somebody is going to fall off of a jet ski. And I am yeah. so glad that you called. And I just don't lose touch with us, right? And come to our Life Recovery right. Conference. Get online. And I think you'll learn a lot uh, from that. I hope you will. And um, really glad 
you call please stay in touch let me send you this life recovery bible and the workbook by the way there are four other workbooks rather than just the original one there's sexual integrity divorce grief and eating disorder workbooks go through the life recovery bible with that it's pretty exciting all right 1-800 new life if you need some help or you would like a life recovery bible Larry Sonnenberg reads the Bible every day. Larry, what do you have for us here? <laughs> cover to uh, cover. The, cover to cover. <laughs> what, do you want to, what do you want to share with us here today, Larry? Well, I've got another testimony. I want to just keep reminding you folks who are listening, uh, this is what happens when people listen, and this is why we seek your support. Uh, this lady named Judy says, just a quick note to thank you for the work you do. I always feel such hurt for the people who call into your program. I never knew that someday I would need you. I've been able to get my husband to go with me to one of your counselors. It's made all the difference in my life. I love that. Yeah, isn't that great? And then she goes on to say something I can't find here. You have helped me strengthen my faith. That's what I love. Hmm. My goodness. I mean, we straightened out her life. We've helped her with her faith, made a difference. Folks, that's why we come to you and say, could you please support New Life? financial gift whatever amount works you know we we depend upon god to give you that nudge and that spirit of what to give we want you to give cheerfully we don't ever want you to give because you feel like we're twisting your arms so if you would just cheerfully make a gift five dollars five ten twenty fifty five thousand ten thousand <laughs> whatever whatever you can cheerfully give because there are people who can give that much yeah. cheerfully so And joining Club New Life is another fabulous thing to do. That Club New Life has really made a difference during this COVID crisis Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. us financially, and we need it to continue and grow. So thank you, everybody who's giving. And as Larry was saying there, you know, Larry, uh, he he is not judgmental. Any denomination that you (laughs) are from, 10s, 20s, whatever, no, it doesn't matter. But, you know, um, what's interesting was that she said she got her husband to go to counseling mm-hmm. yeah. now you know people always ask well should i go to counseling would would you ever ask would it be helpful for a child to go to kindergarten i don't think you'd ever right. <laughs> or, or you'd school. say yeah that yeah. would be helpful okay so i believe counseling is like the kindergarten to insight into your own life mm-hmm. i think everybody could benefit mm-hmm. and a lot of people wish that i would go twice a week rather than once <laughs> but i'm doing the best that i can all right 1-800 new life and uh yeah Hope that you will call us and support us and get some help, too. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. And we're so grateful for all of you who do support us. It makes all the difference in the world. Okay, let's go to, how about we go to um, Steve. Steve, you're on with Steve. Steve, how you doing? Good. I'm doing a lot better than I deserve. How about you? I'm not doing better than I deserve. Okay, so. I knew you were going to say that. All right. uh, How can we help you, Steve? What's the question? From Manitoba. I love that. Yeah. Yes. Um, First of all, thanks for taking my call. I'm a new listener from Sirius XM. Yay. And uh, and your your previous hour, that when that Larry guy was giving a testimony back then, (laughs) And then he thought that you were giving away 12 different gifts, and that lady was laughing. I almost crashed the truck. Her laugh, her, oh, yeah. don't her do laugh that. Made me laugh so hard. <laughs> anyway, right. the question I have, I, I'm going to ask the question, and then you can counsel me. Okay. Um, my son is the youngest of three children that I have, the oldest being 30-something, the middle one being 20-something, and he's 22. Uh, he shacked up with his girlfriend having two kids, and all my kids claim to be God-fearing, Bible-believing, born-again Christians. The only problem is I'm supposed to carry on with the rest of my family like this is normal, this is okay uh, behavior. And uh, um, I don't know how to talk to them. They don't know how to talk to me. My wife and I divorced, my ex-wife and I divorced in 2016. And uh, like I t- told the lady who answered the phone, I've been driving truck. I'm a long haul truck driver, so I don't get to see my kids a whole lot. They, they, you know, they'll reply to texts, but their answers are just, you know, if I ask a question, it's yes, no. They don't elaborate. They don't 
nothing. I don't know how to. I really don't know how to communicate with my children. Okay. So what's the question for us then? Well, how do I how do I learn to how do I talk to my son uh, without being condemning? Because I mean, he's you know nobody's perfect. I understand that. I'm not perfect. I totally understand that. Uh, but. How does somebody call themselves a Christian and live a life like that? I don't get well, that. Well, that is, uh, that. that is one of the great mysteries of, of life. <laughs> and um, I know preachers that have had affairs mm -hmm. and uh, preachers that are mean, mm -hmm. preachers that all they care about is the money. I mean, so that's a big mystery. Now, you ask a really good question, though, and that was, how do you talk to someone who's involved in sin and not, you know, <laughs> run them off or condemn them or whatever well i think right. you just don't talk about that thing every time you know when well, when i, uh, I, when I, never I had do. a i've never okay. brought it up All right. never well, then, okay so then the other thing is um maybe you don't talk to them but you decide i'm gonna listen rather than talk that could change. <laughs> Becky, what do you think i have a couple of questions steve so you you just were recently divorced and of course, I want to know what ago. happened there, and then how that all affected the family. Do you have like the thirty-second version of that? Yeah, my wife had an affair, and she got mm. tired of me, so she kicked me to the curb. And uh, um, and uh, oddly enough, I I I uh, kept her secret for a long time because she didn't want her kids to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but my kids treat me like the enemy so badly that I finally said to her one day that I'm giving you to the end of this month, whatever month that was, if you don't tell the kids, I'm telling them. And she told them that week. And yet this, that was two years ago. And mm. to this day, they still treat me the exact same and they still talk to her like nothing's wrong. Okay. So mm. you, there is some repair that needs to be done for you. Um, in order for you to move forward and have a fresh relationship with your kids. Um, the fact that your son is living with his girlfriend, that's a side issue. Um, I mean, I just, my first thought is healing is a choice. That would be my first, you we'll know, to send, send, mm -hmm. send we'll that send book. Because, yeah. Steve, the only way that you're going to be able to connect with them is when the hurt and the pain from what you've been through in the divorce gets calmed down gets no, healed well, yeah yeah, yeah. and Actually, then well no but look yeah. you, steve you, you're up. angry yeah. you're yeah. very very well, angry not, still not, and hurt Actually, i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm not it's okay fact that well, when she came to me with the divorce we'll right. talk about it when you get back after i found the pornography on the internet i said you either get help or I have to leave this household. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter-in-place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle workshop can help. Every Man's Battle, I fought it the whole week with my wife. Within two hours, you could have opened a book and showed me where my life has been ever since I was a little boy. The Every Man's Battle workshop can be a trip to the sexual addiction emergency room. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, September 12th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. He said, this may have saved my life. Every Man's Battle was a life-changing experience for me and a marriage-saving experience for me. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800. 
new life. They did care, and they did follow up very lovingly, and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. All right, trying to help Steve here, and mm-hmm. the kids think he's the bad guy, and, and uh, we want to help him. So, Becky, what are your thoughts? So, Steve, the reason why I'm saying that you, you probably have some healing to do is because you've been the peacekeeper for a long time. Would you say that that's true? My whole life. Okay. My whole life. Okay. I, 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 I love peace. Mm-hmm. Well, and but now where are you? Peace has cost you. Yes. Say more about that, Jill. Well, it, it's cost you. By keeping the peace, you weren't able to keep the relationship because it sounds like, you know, when one person is just always agreeable and just trying to keep things nice. Oh, that way? No, that's not me. Okay. That, that's not me. No, okay. no, no. I was. I just don't like arguing, so I, I like to air things out, get them out in the open, and get it over. Okay. But I have to address something Steve said about me being angry. See, this is part of my communication problem. People read me totally wrong. Okay. I, it's just the way I communicate, but yet people think I'm mad, I'm upset, I get, I get. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I'm just. I call. I consider myself super passionate about the things that I believe in to the point where people look at me funny, even. Like, yeah, this guy I, I should have. I, I stand no. corrected. I should have said you sound angry, <laughs> but if you're not angry, no, you're I'm not. I'm not. Angry. Fact, okay. I, honest, honestly, Steve, to be as God is my witness, and I hate, I hate having to admit this, but I was happy the marriage ended. Oh. Okay, but I but I'm not talking about angry about. I'm I'm not no, talking about angry no, about okay about that because when you came on and you said, you know, how can somebody be a Christian and then they're doing this and how do you talk to somebody yeah. that's living like that then that's when i think well yeah. man he's okay. rather than being able to accept this uh you're you're really frustrated and angry about it and you know i quote this often acceptance is the answer to all my problems today and it is really the answer to being angry and upset to where it's hard for me to connect with somebody well Mm -hmm. and i would say steve that um you you were asking about the son um that's living with the girlfriend yeah um until you connect with them you really don't get to say anything to them i know that that's um hurtful to you um to see them um but if you can build into the relationship then you have a voice into the relationship Mm -hmm. but you can't um you're saying that you you get one word answers and that kind of thing and i wonder so okay so we accept that you're not angry but you're very passionate well part of communication and connection is to be able to do some self-monitoring and um to to notice that you know maybe my passion is putting people off and then i'm not able to be connected with that um, it, it may be deeper than what you think it is. I, I, I hear you say that you're not angry, so we accept that. But if your mode of conversation um, disables the process of people connecting with you, that's, yeah, that I can w- be worked on. I wonder if your kids read you wrong. And I wonder Everybody if... Everybody does, but this, okay. is, this okay. is the way I've always been. So that's what I'm thinking. If my kids have known me my whole, their whole entire life, why don't they know who their father is? They don't. Yeah. Well, that's well, look, a really Steve, good no. question. Steve, it could be uh, because of the way you communicate, you don't allow them to ask you some questions where they would get oh, to know. Yeah. But but here's something. Oh, yeah. Here's something. Yeah, yeah. You've okay. you've said some things. You've said some things that angry people say. Like, as I mentioned, <laughs> when you said, "How can my son do this?" and Okay, and then you sound angry. So, but you say well, you're not I, angry. I'm okay, so, so I would say that frustration. Don't don't call yourself angry, mm-hmm. but I would say to get in with a good, strong man who's a counselor, and say, help me deal with the frustration, and help me learn to communicate mm-hmm. in a way 
that draws people to me rather than makes me out to be the bad guy when I'm the good guy here. Because even when well, you are defending yourself, Steve, it comes off as angry. Like okay, you're except saying, can I say I something? Yeah, because ahead, I, I don't necessarily hear anger. I hear a lot of frustration. I hear you being disheartened you. because you. you're sad that, oh my gosh, I'm waving my arms, I'm standing here in front of you, and nobody sees who I really am. And so I feel so disconnected, and everybody functions as if I'm someone that I'm not. Right. And so and I think it's this lack you. of being known. Well, and what I was going to say is that the defense comes from saying, no, I'm not angry. No, I'm not angry. Right, so right, then, right. And then that defense becomes the anger or the frustration so, that people see. Okay, so part of this, Steve, is to be able to have your children tell you how they experience you without you defending so even if they're wrong it's important that you hear them and i think maybe you need to write them you know a email or a letter and just say i realize that i feel disconnected that we are disconnected that i don't know how to communicate with you as my child and i am so sad about this i would really value you telling me how you experience me and where you think the difficulty is because i would really love the opportunity to learn and grow and bridge that gap now steve i want you to i want you to know yeah. that we spent a little longer with you than we do most callers because we connected with you and mm -hmm. we care about you. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope that you sense that we sense you're really a great guy mm -hmm. and you've got all of this and we want yeah. you to experience the love from your children and family. And I just think that if you could submit to a little bit of counseling it, you would you would find the life, the acceptance, and the connection that you really are looking for and that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's hard to to say, okay, I'll get some counseling, but I really hope you will. There's one thing I was thinking, Joe, oh. when you were um, encouraging Steve to connect with his kids. I, you know, I might take a different approach initially and just extend, I'm so grateful that you're my son. I'm so grateful. Yes. Yeah. And there you go. And uh, I remember, you know, this fun time that we spent together, like something that's so not confrontational, that's so just pouring into them. Uh -huh. And you don't need to do a three page letter. It could be an email right, since you're right. traveling sure. and all that. But I just think um, that is going to be a process of healing. And we already said we're going to send you healing as a choice. And I think you're going to get some really good insight in that. Um, and I know being a long haul trucker, it's hard to stay connected connected but the great thing is we've got telehealth now um you know where you can connect with the counselor while you're driving just like you're talking to us right now and um i think that oh, really? that would bring you some yep. healing and then um give you some insight um and in and, and so that you can impact your kids in a positive way glad that you called hold on i'm going to send you the book take your life back and i think that's going to be healing is a choice and i'm going to send oh. healing is a choice send you two <laughs> not 12 but two i'll send that to you healing is a choice and take your life back both come in your way and uh the fabulous fabulous books written by fabulous authors so uh anyway i hope you'll like them i'm really glad you called hey let's pray for him yes. and pray for healing and uh you know so often we find out we don't really know our kids they don't know us never too late to try to give it a second shot mm -hmm. if you need some help you can call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and you could sign up for the life recovery conference 12 12 big steps to happier and that's gonna be right out there on october the third but september the 12th we're doing every man's battle online and we sure would love to have you join that it can change everything and intimacy and in marriage is october the 24th and restore november 14th and the big brains, boundaries, battles in the Bible. That's December the 5th. That's the intensive to meet all intensives. Sign up. Come join us. We love you. Thanks for praying for us and supporting us. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's the number. We'd love to talk to you. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you. But you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, Steve Artemir here. Thanks for watching New Life Live on our New Life YouTube channel. You know, you can see it anytime. Hope you'll subscribe. And when you do, hope you'll turn that little button thing on the bell so that whenever we post a new video, it'll ring right through. Now, if you go to newlife.com, you'll see the schedule of when we're in the studio, which is helpful to know if you have a question for the program. Or you could go to newlife.com or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could do this on the app. I mean, there's so many ways that you can stay in touch with us and know when we're there because we want to answer your questions. So thanks for watching right here on the New Life YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Click here to subscribe.